I'm Becky Goldsmith with Piece of Cake and I'd like to show you how to hand applique an inner point. I'm going to work on this scalloped flower. Now let me bring the camera in just a little bit. Uh, first, before I pin this shape to my block, I would finger press it. And I've got a different video that includes how to finger press, but just to show you again, on an outer curve like this, I would use the fingers on one hand and turn that seam allowance under and crease it with a series of short overlapping straight lines. As you get to an inner point, finger press beyond the end of that line into the body of the applique piece. Turn it in your hand and do the same thing on the other side of the inner point. This scalloped flower has outer curves that lead into inner points all the way around. But sometimes inner points um, have straight lines that lead into them, say on the inside of a window. In that case, you could use the fingers of both hands to turn the seam allowance under and finger press it. Now, if I was doing this now, I would finger press the entire flower and then pin it to my block. I've already prepared a scalloped flower to sew on on camera. Now let me back this up just a little bit. There we go. I want you to see how it's pinned. Notice that I have the pins in position so that they're holding each side of those inner points all the way around. If this was a bigger flower, I would have more pins, but for this size, this is enough pins. These are half inch sequin pins. I think I decided I would begin sewing right here. And let me see if I can bring this in just a little bit. Oh, I poked myself. Alright, so I'm going to start on the flatter part of this curve because it will be um, easier to turn it under. Anytime you're sewing an outer curve on your first stitch, turn under the seam allowance on both sides of that stitch and you'll get a prettier join when you get all the way back around and come back to that first stitch. Now if I had been thinking I would have sewn this part already before I turned the camera on, but I didn't. So what I'm going to do is stop the camera so that I can sew closer to the point. I'll be right back. I've sewn as far as I can sew and now it's time to take a clip. If I sewed any farther as I turned under this seam allowance I'd be distorting the fabric on the other side of the inner point and I don't want to do that. To clip an inner point you want to make one clip only straight into that inner point. You don't want the clip to veer either to the right or to the left. Now I'm going to use my 4 inch perfect scissors, the one um, that Karen K. Buckley produces. I like these scissors for clipping inner points. They have a serrated edge that helps to control the fabric and they cut to the point without distorting it. Before I put my scissors in to make this clip, I want to talk to you just a minute about how scissors work. There are two blades that are screwed together at a pivot point. Where the blades meet, that's where the clip happens. Now think about what happens when you clip. When you put your scissor into the fabric, all you can see is the top blade and too often people focus on this blade and they put the blade where they want the cut to be rather than remembering that the clip happens 
on the left side of the top blade. It's very important to position your scissors correctly inside the inner point to make that clip. Oop. So let me come in a little closer now and carefully position my scissors. I want to clip through the line just barely. The end of the clip needs to be just on the other side of that chalk line. Now, instead of putting my scissor like this, I'm going to move it just a little bit to the right and look at it, get it almost closed, and make sure that the left side of my scissor blade is where I want the cut to be. Just like that. Now, I'm going to turn my block in my hand, just like this. And I like to take my dampened toothpick, especially when I'm sewing from right to left with the horizon. I like to take my toothpick and fold this side of the inner point out of the way. It sort of protects that fragile raw cut edge there. Now, I often, when I'm not sewing on camera, sew toward myself on the right side of my applique. The vast majority of you do not do that, but for those very few of you who sew that direction, please note that you can't do this part. Just ignore it. You can't fold under that second side of the point. But that's not most of you. Most of you do just exactly what I showed you there. Now, once you make the clip, you still have a significant amount of seam allowance to turn under and sew before you get to the inner point. So, I'm going to carefully turn this seam allowance under. I am about three-eighths of an inch away from the inner point. But as I get closer, as I get to um, the space that's about 3 sixteenths of an inch away from that inner point, I'm going to start making shorter stitches. And I'm going to do something else as well. Now, I'm going to make one more stitch here. Just like that. Now to turn under that remaining seam allowance, I use my dampened toothpick. So I put it in my mouth and dampen it because when the wood is damp it raises the grain of the wood and it grabs the fabric a little better. What I want to do is place this toothpick very carefully against that edge of the fabric, against that fold, and I'm I'm not going to abuse it. I'm just barely going to move that fabric underneath the edge. You can think of it as, as a pat. I'm just patting it under. Notice I'm not taking my toothpick in and moving it around and reaming it and twirling it and pulling it. I'm only folding under the seam allowance on the first side of the point. Now I'm going to mash that down with my finger and set it aside because I want to draw you a picture. So, and I may have to back the camera up so it behaves a little better. What you're sewing here is an inner point, right? And we're sewing in this direction. Now, as you've been sewing all along, your stitches have stayed right close to the edge of the applique fabric. If your stitches stay right at the edge of the fabric, as you get down here where there's almost no seam allowance, you know what's going to happen. It's going to pull and fray open and be a big mess. What that tells you is that as you get closer to the inner point, your stitches have to catch more of the applique fabric than they normally would. The other thing that I think is important is that your stitches need to get just a little closer together than they would normally be. Now you don't want to make a satin stitch here, you just want them a little closer together because the fabric is pretty fragile down here. So, 
Your needle goes in at the edge of the applique into the background there, but on this next stitch, let's catch a little bit more of the applique fabric. Your needle's going to go in at the edge of the applique into the background and come up and catch a little more of the applique. It's going to go in there and come up about here. Now, when your needle goes into the background at that deepest part of the V, that's a spot where several stitches are going to start. So I would put my needle in here and then change direction and come up right about there. Now this would be the biggest stitch. I like to do a tack stitch here. So I put my needle back in at that spot and come up exactly here again. At that point I can turn my applique in my hand. My needle will go in again right there. Now that puts two layers of thread, one on top of each other, in the most obvious spot. If you don't want to do that, don't make a tack stitch. But honestly, I think it looks good rather than bad. So I put my needle in, whoops, right there and come up again here. Then I would put my needle in. That's the last stitch that starts at that point. And I would come up here, go in there, come up here, and so on until you're back to your regular stitch. Now this drawing is extreme. It's very extreme. These stitches are not huge. You'll see when I sew the actual piece. But basically, what you want to do is have these stitches get incrementally bigger, and then you want them to match and get incrementally smaller on the other side. You want the stitches to be neat and tidy, to hold the fabric without causing it to fray, you want it to look intentional, as if you meant to do it. You won't believe what I did. I picked up my applique and sewed that entire point with my hands just far enough off camera that you couldn't see the sewing. So I'm restarting here and working on the next point around this flower so you can see what I'm doing. Now where I left off on the other flower, and I'm going to move my sandboard out of the way underneath because I think the light will be better. Um, where I left off on the last point, I had turned under this side, and on the previous point I had turned under a little more of this first side of the inner point. This is an interesting shape because as you work around the flower, the grain of the fabric changes with each inner point. So on the previous inner point, I had edges that were more on the bias grain of the fabric, and honestly that works just a little bit easier. On this point, I'm more on the straight of grain, and when you're more on the straight of grain, um, you have to handle this this edge just a little bit more carefully. I'm going to pull in just the tiniest little bit and be careful to keep my hands on camera. Again, to turn under this edge, I'm going to use my dampened toothpick, but here I'm going to need to roll under just a little more. Now notice it's still a very small motion, and I've turned under enough to take one stitch, maybe two. I've got to get my needle back in my hand. So I'm going to do that. Now I've got a little bit, the tiniest little bit of a pleat there that I needed to fix. So I'm going to take one stitch. I am just about to the place where I need to start making my stitches closer together and start catching more of the applique. But I want to take care of this little bit of seam allowance. See that, that little thread there? I'm just going to pat it with my toothpick and hold it with my thumb. Alright, now here we go. I'm going in next to the edge of the applique and this next stitch is going to be a little shorter and by that I mean closer to the previous stitch.
and I'm going to catch a little more of the applique fabric than I normally would. You want your stitches to be perpendicular to that raw, or I'm sorry, to that um, folded under edge, to the edge of the applique. You don't want the stitch to be either to the right or to the left because it will pull the edge of the applique. It won't look nice. So, if you have problems seeing that, pull your thread out so that it's perpendicular to the edge of your fabric and then follow back along that thread, move it just gently out of the way and put your needle in at the edge of the applique. Now again, shorter stitch and this time I'm going to catch a little more of the applique. But look what happens with that thread as I pull it tight. It stays perpendicular to the edge. It's not at an angle. Now because of the grain of the fabric here and because I've got that little thread. I want to make sure that that's turning under. I believe I can get two more stitches before I get to the inner point, the very deepest part of the inner point. Now I'm not being shy about grabbing the fabric here and honestly because of the way this fabric is behaving I'm catching kind of a lot. That is more than a sixteenth of an inch, that stitch right there. Now, because I've got this one thread that keeps wanting to point out, I'm going to take my dampened toothpick and just gently, if, if my finger was little enough, what I'd want to do is get in there and just fold it under and just tap it, but my finger is way too big. So I'm using the toothpick instead. See how that, that thread turns under on its finger pressed crease. Now I'm going, going to put my needle in at the deepest part of that inner point. I'm going to turn the direction and go straight in to that point. This is going to be my, my longest stitch. Whoop, my thread hung up. This is where I do a tack stitch. So I put my needle in again at the deepest part of that point and I catch the fabric. I bring my needle out as close as I can to be exactly where the needle has come out of the fabric on the previous stitch. Just like that. Now, I'm going to turn my applique in my hand, make sure I'm on the camera, and because I've had this in my hand and I've been holding it, I'm just going to double check and make sure that that edge has stayed in place. Now, this is the second stitch in this um, deepest part of the inner point. So I'm going to go in at the deepest part of the clip, deepest part of the point, turn my needle, and I'm going to work my way out the same way that I worked my way in. Now this is the last stitch that I make that goes in at that one spot at the deepest part of the of the inner point. Now I don't really need to but you might sometimes need to just give that a little pat. So I'm not quite back to my regular stitch but this next stitch should put me back at the edge of the applique. So there are my stitches. Now one last thing, because of the way I'm having you hold the fabric, your finger is going to crease this fabric right there, this, this part of the turn under allowance. And when you try to turn it under, sometimes you can get it to turn under without causing a pleat and a point there, but more often it'll do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and make it have a pleat here so that I can explain what I'm talking about. So if you find yourself ever sewing where the outer edge has this point, it's most often caused because the fabric has folded over itself and made this little, this little pleat underneath there. To fix that, when you find out that you've got one, reach with your toothpick into that fold and pull the fabric open to the right 
get behind it, smooth it out to the left until the fabric on the underneath has smoothed out and your outer edge has also smoothed out. You can see that happen with your eyes and you can feel the, the fold of fabric smooth out with your fingers as you hold the applique. So there you go. That's an inner point. And what you'll notice is, see there's that first one that I stitched um, off camera. What you should notice is that these look like a point. They don't look like an inner curve. If you are careful to always treat your inner points as one side and then the other. So one side of the point then the other side of the point. Concentrate more on that and less on turning under the seam allowance at the very um, deepest part of the point and I think you'll be happy with the results. Happy stitching!